So in today's video, how muscular and big and strong do you have to be to throw as hard as you want, to be as effective as you can be as a pitcher? This has been a really big cultural shift. When I was playing, I'm 37 now today as of 2023, when I was playing in college when I was 18, strength training was just starting to become a lot more mainstream. And as I continue to grow and evolve like five years later, 10 years later, really about when I was like 28, 30, strength training has become very mainstream. And of course I owned a baseball and strength training academy for ball players. So the thing is here, we've all seen back in the day, ball players were told not to lift weights because they would get too tight. They wouldn't be flexible. They couldn't pitch their best. And really what the reality is that you can be very flexible and mobile and pitch really well despite carrying a lot of body mass. So for me, for example, I'm six foot, 205 pounds. I'm a much more muscular guy than the average pitcher. Most pitchers are like 6'2", 190, 6'2", 180. And that's like a pretty wiry, lanky, but still like strong looking build. So my basic advice here for most high school ball players or middle school players who I know that's my main audience here on YouTube is you need to get as big and strong as you possibly can. The idea that you're gonna get so muscular where you can't move well and you start to lose velocity as a pitcher, I haven't seen almost anyone get to that point. And so if you're like six foot, like I am, you're probably gonna have to be 220, like looking like a linebacker size, basically, before you start to really feel too tight and bound up where you're gonna feel like, you know what, this is actually hurting my performance. Now for me, I have like a pretty wide chest, I have a pretty big back. So I always tried to put in on as much weight as I could in the off season. I would try to get to like 200, something like that. I'd be like, feel a little bit bigger than I wanted to be uh, come spring training in April. And then you just can't possibly lift weights as much as you can in season as you could in the off season. So there always is like this natural like progression of losing strength and losing muscle size during the baseball season. It's just how it works. It's hot out. You're playing all the time. You're doing your conditioning. It's just it's hard to eat as much as you would in the off season. You don't get to lift as much and your and your workouts are more about maintenance rather than like continue to build and they're really, you know, really rigorous heavy workouts that would build muscle. You just can't really do that in season as well. So for all those factors, you're going to see your strength and your size decline during the season. So it makes sense in my opinion, to come into the season slightly bigger than you would be if you get to this point where you're actually kind of at like a plateau. So this is going to take a long time for most of you high schoolers to really get where you feel like I'm at my like really big weight and I'm comfortable at like, you know, 195 or 180 or whatever it is. And I feel like this is as big as I want to be. And then I know that I'll taper down slightly during the season. So for me, again, I was always a little bit bigger in the chest and the back than I liked in spring training and like the first month of the season. And then I would start to lose a little bit of that muscle. I would start to, to stretch out a little bit more too, just from pitching every day. And then I would kind of hit my like perfect weight, maybe in like late May, June, and feel like I was in really good shape, really like a good place with my body in the middle of the season, which is where you want to be like mid season form, right? But so that's my view of it as a seasons like veteran, like pro player, someone who's like gotten, who's like built their body up over many, many years and is now trying to figure out where do I maintain my best body. So if you're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and you're still more of a kid than a man, your goal should be to pack on, should be to pack on as much size and strength as you possibly can all off season. That means eating your face off. That means being really rigorous with your workouts and really diligent with your workouts. That means three or four workouts a week for nine months of the year, if not a little bit more. And so if you're doing that, you'll continue to put on weight consistently until you hit that point eventually. And for me, that was at like 20, 21 years old when I was really like, this is me sort of as like my man body. And then, you know, there's actually almost like a second puberty at like 24, 25, which I won't get into, but like you really sort of like become a little bit bigger at like 25 than you are at like 21 or 22. I don't know why, but there's something about like that little jump between college and like true manhood. But the biggest takeaway here is I don't want you to feel nervous about putting on too much weight as if it's going to hurt your performance or make you too tight. Because I have never really seen that uh, in all my years as a pitching coach and a strength coach. I've never seen any like 15 or 16 year, year old kid be able to put so much muscle in their frame that they then start to throw slower or were too tight or whatever. Um, it really doesn't happen. And if you continue to, to throw and do like the healthy flexibility and mobility work, which you need to do more of that as you get stronger. So as you, you know, if you get to 170 pounds, 180 pounds, 
it does make sense to start doing more flexibility and mobility work as part of your workouts or maybe going to yoga once or twice, twice a week so that you're training both those things. You're training for size and strength and you're also training to keep your joints and your muscles you know, flexible and mobile. So those things, and I did a ton of yoga when I was in college and I had a really rigorous flexibility and mobility routine when I was also in college and in pro ball. So those are pieces of the pie, but the big takeaway here is there is no set weight. Everyone's body's different. I carry muscle different than you know one teammate, than another teammate, than another teammate. Um, but I think most pitchers are, would be surprised at how much muscle they can carry and just continue to get better and better and better. Because really it does come down to, especially when it comes to velocity, if you are strong, like if you imagine two versions of you, here's Dan right now at six foot 205. And then there's another Dan who's six foot 180. Which Dan do you think throws harder? The 200 pound version or the 180 pound version? You know, like the 100, the 200 pound version is a lot stronger and a lot bigger. He's got more muscle mass to put behind the baseball. Yes, pitching is a complex motion. Bodybuilders don't throw hard. Uh, but still, considering all factors are the same, and I have good mechanics, a bigger, stronger person with the same good mechanics is going to throw harder than a smaller, weaker person, right? Now, if there's 200 pound Dan and 220 pound Dan, I don't think there's probably any difference between those two. 220 pounds is probably so much extra muscle that I don't, that isn't really going to contribute where it probably won't matter. But maybe like 210 pound Dan does throw a little bit harder, right? And if you think about it, and I'm certainly like, do not take performance enhancers. That's something I'm very passionate about. But if you imagine why do people throw harder when they take steroids or HGH, it's because their body gets bigger and stronger, right? That's why they throw harder. The steroids don't do it. The steroids cause your body to get bigger and stronger, and then you throw harder. Do not do steroids. That is bad for you. It is terrible long-term, and it's cheating. Don't do that. But if you just think about why does it work, it's because you get bigger and stronger. So your goal should be to get as big and strong in the weight room as you can. You'll probably never get to the point where you're so big that your performance actually starts to go, go backwards. It takes a really long time to get to that point where you're so muscle bound that nothing is getting better, right? So hopefully today's video is helpful. I know there's lots of different aspects to this talk, but the big takeaway message is work hard in the gym, eat a lot of food, healthy food, get a lot of calories, get your protein shakes in, all that good stuff, and keep diligent in the weight room so you can continue to add strength and size over time because you're just chipping away and adding a little bit every year, adding muscle every year, adding size every year, and that's going to contribute in a very positive way to your velocity and just your durability as a pitcher in general. You want to build a stronger frame. And again, can think about the analogy that I gave you. Bigger, stronger, better trained version versus smaller, weaker, less well-trained version. Which one is going to be a better athlete, including a pitcher? It's going to be the bigger, stronger, faster, better trained version of you. Okay? So keep working hard in the gym. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, share it with a friend, and I'll see you here in the next video.